Last week, a few folks decided to sue the state, actually the federal government, to stop the Taxpayer Bill of Rights here in Colorado. Why? Because it's a violation of the United States Constitution. Who knew? Of course, they could have done that 20-some years ago when, when it passed, but no. With us is Rob Nadelson, author of the original Constitution and with the senior fellow at the Independence Institute. First of all, give me, give me the, the skinny on this. The lawsuit basically says we're going to call TABOR, the Taxpayer Bill of Rights, that law that says we get to vote on tax increases and debt increases. It's unconstitutional in the U.S. Constitution, not because it's a bad idea or bad policy and we don't like it, but because it was an initiative? No, well, yeah. Uh, the argument here is that Tabor violates a part of the Constitution which says that the United States guarantees to every state a Republican form of government. So the argument... And since we allow Democrats to be elected in this state <laughs> against my wishes, that that means we're not a republic. Small r. Oh, small r. Small r. Although the founders would have used big r because they capitalized nouns. However, um, republican form of government, which they say, according to the plaintiffs, means that tax imposition laws must be undertaken wholly by the legislature, that you cannot have any popular democratic aspects to the process. And if you do, they say, that converts the state from a republic into something else, perhaps a democracy, and that violates the U.S. Constitution. So they're suing to invalidate Tabor and potentially every other initiative ever passed in any other state. All right, so for, for those people who are out there who hate the Taxpayer Bill of Rights because it's, it, it's got such a bad rap, it's mean and awful, stay tuned. You can hate the Taxpayer Bill of Rights and still realize that this lawsuit is an absolute crock and very dangerous for both the left and the right. So at stake of this, they're, they're saying it doesn't violate the state constitution of Colorado. They're saying it, 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 it affects that big one. The big one, the federal yeah. government says you can't do it. This is a violation. Yeah. And in other words, if we here in Colorado try to outlaw uh, a religion, we say, no, the official religion of Colorado is Mormonism. Because it, it actually is. Did you know that? And that, <laughs> that the federal, you could sue to the federal government, and the federal government say, no, no, you, you, you can't do that. Right. Um, I, if a Colorado law has to be consistent with the U.S. Constitution. Here in, here in Colorado, we have a right to vote in elections as to whether we want to be taxed or not. And the claim is that that violates the guarantee clause, the clause I just mentioned in the U.S. Constitution. Here in Colorado, we're one of about 17 to 20 states that have what's known as the initiative and referendum process. 24. 24, okay, 24. 24. Yeah. So we've got 24 states that citizens can leapfrog over the state legislature and leapfrog over the governor and say, you know what, we're going to pass something that you guys might not want and you haven't done yourselves, but we really want. It actually goes beyond that, John. In addition to the 24 states that have initiatives where you can, where the citizens can initiate legislation by a petition, 49 of the states, every state but, but Delaware, has a referendum. And what this lawsuit seems to be saying is that a referendum whereby the legislature presents something to the voters for their approval, that that may also violate the Republican form. Now, that would have the effect of invalidating the institutions of 49 different states. All right, so getting back to the idea of, an, of the initiative, We've passed a lot of things here that have been initiated by the people. I put a mm -hmm. few things on the ballot myself. Uh, and we've tried to put things on the ballot to limit government more, more often than not. Over the last hundred years, I can think of, of course, of the Taxpayer Bill of Rights, which says we get a vote before mm -hmm. you raise taxes. I can think of term limits because no legislator wants to have a restriction of Tabor on themselves or term limits. The open meetings law, it's saying the sunshine law that you have to meet in public if you're in government. The uh, merit selection of judges, campaign finance reform, the ethics law that passed a few years ago. All these laws, I can understand why legislators hate them. What legislator is going to limit the amount of money they can spend or limit their power just to raise taxes whenever they want? Who would want to limit their term in office? Who would want to limit that they have to do everything in public and have their documents open for public inspection? So this, that initiative is really a safety valve. It, it, allows, safety, it allows us, yeah. the, the people, you know, us small guys, to say, you can't get away with that. It is a safety valve. Now, we don't have it at the federal level, but the idea at the federal level 
is that the states could use various mechanisms that they have under the Constitution to rein in the federal government, to check federal authority. But you don't have that at the state level. I mean, counties, for example, can't check state authority. So the substitute for that is the initiative process. It is a way of disciplining or limiting the power of, of, of politicians. And for that very reason, many politicians don't like it. This lawsuit against Tabor, and let me see, I, I, I understand this pretty well, I think. What they're saying is because the people initiated this constitutional right that's put on our state ballot, and it didn't come from the state legislature, because the legislature would never put it on the ballot, it's therefore unconstitutional. If, if you go... How, how does that... What's, what's their logic in that? Okay. Um, first off, it's not just that it was initiated by the people. It's also... What they also object to is that Tabor has a series of mandatory referenda every time... Uh, the governing body proposes a tax increase, there has to be a referendum on it. I think they, they find that objectionable. There, John, there is an old argument, not as old as the Constitution, it goes back to about the 1840s. And the argument is that in order to be a republic, um, a government must be wholly representative. The people cannot have any role actually in approving or making laws. The argument is false. It's clearly false but it has assumed kind of a life of its own over the years. It's entered the popular mythology. But the idea is that a Republican form of government, again, small l Republican, yeah. is that we elect people. Those elect people are supposed to represent right. and, us, yeah. and we don't go over their heads. This is not a mob rule. Direct democracy is sometimes called mob rule, and I'm very sensitive to, to that idea that if you just get 51% of the people, they can... Uh, impose their will on the other 49. So we elect these people, they make the decisions for us, even if we don't like them. The, the idea of, rep, especially in the tax area, the idea of representatives rather than people themselves imposing the tax, originally was considered a second best solution. The reason why you had a House of Commons in Britain or a House of Representatives in the United States was because in the technology of the time, you could not get everybody together in the town square to vote. It was actually a second best solution. If you go back to when the founders wrote the term Republican form of government, you'll find actually most of the republics that the founders talked about, that they used as models, both positive and negative, actually had direct citizen lawmaking, including the most famous republic of all times, the Roman Republic. Um, the and Romans had, had the initiative process? They had what amounted to it, People, yes. Citizens could the put citizens things on the law. Came, the citizens come into the forum. There were four separate assemblies for dealing with different sorts of matters. And, uh, and, and they voted directly. Now, ultimately, of course, the Roman Republic became too big to have that. And that was obviously impractical at the federal level and the technology at the time the Constitution was adopted. But, John, as jo James Madison pointed out, the states themselves can adopt any Republican form that they wish. And as technology develops, it becomes more possible, more feasible, to allow the people to vote directly Isn't on that matters. why more Western states, that is, later states to join the Union, have the initiative process built into their state constitution? Yes, that's right, because the initiative process became particularly popular in the 19th century when these states were, were being admitted, and also because the Western states were a source of, uh, or a, a locale for populist sentiment. Uh, they didn't trust the feds as much. Uh, well, they, they didn't they trust did, their own government as much. They didn't trust their own government. They didn't trust the vested interests. And they wanted the people to have that particular check. So you're right. Most of the states with the initiative process right. the, are in the West. If what you're saying is right, that the states have the right to form any representative form of government they like, no, any, any Republican, Republican form, form, of form of government, including yeah. the initiative, that, that this lawsuit's not going to go that far. But let me ask you, why pick on Tabor? Isn't the same argument equally valid when it comes to term limits well, or let, Amendment 23 yeah. or the ethics law or campaign finance laws? Let, let Doesn't me, the same argument apply? Let me answer it this way. It, it's not just that this suit suffers from inaccurate depiction of the Republican form of government. The suit also has other major problems. You alluded to it to them, uh, uh, to them earlier. One, it was brought 19 years after Tabor's passed, okay? That's going to raise some judicial eyebrows. It, this particular clause of the Constitution that they're citing, the U.S. Supreme Court has held for 150 years or more that it's a matter for Congress to enforce that clause, not the courts. So why would they bring a case so manifestly uh, without merit? And, the, and I think it's basically part of a very long campaign to try to get to wear Coloradans down 
and get them to give up what has become a very precious constitutional right. I've described it as waterboarding the taxpayers. <laughs> so I think we're in agreement here. This, this, the guy who's running this, I think, is looking for some good publicity. He dropped this lawsuit on. Uh, um, Once the case is dismissed, right. he's going to get some bad publicity. Right, but yeah, uh, I don't think so <laughs> because it's it's chic to hate Tabor. I mean, it is, it is. You do not want to go to a cocktail party in Colorado with anybody who gets any governmental money or a contract from it and and like Tabor. That's mm -hmm. just that's not good. You want to hate Tabor. It's, it's very it's a, the suave thing to do. If. If he and, he and this suit was entered in right after the session was closed, and so all the political reporters had nothing really to write about. So this got a front page story. It was good, good stuff. But are, am I wrong in saying this is silly? This is just completely silly that it's not going to, and this is not going to go you're, anywhere. If you're viewing it as another effort and a, another part of pounding the taxpayers, I don't, I don't really think it's silly. And in fact. You know, we from, from, from a purely legal point of view, not a PR point of view. Oh, right. But from a legal point from of view, from a legal this point is of view, from, you can never say a lawsuit has absolutely no merit whatsoever. But this is about as close to zero as it comes, right. in my view. From a public relations point of view, this is another way to, to yell and scream at Tabor and get people to yes. believe that. Oh my God, the people hate it so and, much. The only way we can get rid of it is to vote it out. And what's going to happen in this situation, as it's happened before, is the taxpayers are going to have to fork out money to defend this suit. Isn't it funny that if I was putting forward a lawsuit to get rid of, oh, I don't know, campaign finance reform or that silly ethics law, that I imagine my detractors would say, what a waste of taxpayer dollars making the AG here in Colorado defend a law from this frivolous lawsuit, but it's a little, little different with this one. Well, you know, it depends on who, whose ox is gored. I mean, that, that's politics. Imagine you're very, talk to the people who despise Tabor. Tell them why, why this is a bad idea, why, why well, this is just silly and right. wrong. Uh, whether you like particular initiatives or not, the initiative process is a valuable right that, that Coloradans have. It's been used by the left. It's been used by the right. It has proven a very popular and effective process. This lawsuit, if, if it were to win, a highly unlikely event that it were to win, on the terms that it is, would destroy that process. It would take away a precious right from uh, Coloradans. Here's a quick analogy. We would not give up the right to have our, elect our legislators because sometimes the legislators pass stupid laws. Um, in the same way, we should not give up the initiative process simply because we sometimes disagree with the result. Real quickly, this isn't just about Colorado. If this is successful, all the initiatives that are passed on a local level here in Colorado, the city and county level, those go away. But what happens in other states? If the United States Supreme Court says the initiative process is unconstitutional, those 24 states that have the initiative yeah. process, all those laws are equally unconstitutional. It is possible to make an argument that initiative is okay on the local level, but not on the state level. But the kind of chaos that it would, would, would result from the winning of this lawsuit is one reason why the courts say this is a matter for Congress, not for the courts. Rob Nadelson, check out the book, The Original Constitution. Thank you for being here. Check out me. I'm Late Nights on 850 KOA. Tell a friend. We'll see you next week.